So here we do paleoclimate. So paleo means old, right? So this is Earth's climate through geologic time. Not a section where we'll spend a lot of time, but it actually helps us to cut out some common time waster arguments. So it'll end up saving us time in the end to talk about this, and it's important context as well. So this is a kind of artist rendition of the snowball Earth, so-called, right? Um, it's known at least two times in Earth's entire history that it has been totally frozen over. So this is not just like having ice caps or like an ice age. This is like everything is frozen, including the surfaces of the entire ocean. Um, importantly, if you went back to those computer models and tried to figure out kind of the different stable configurations for all of Earth's climate, you would find that there's one stable configuration for the entire Earth that's pretty much set to where it is now, and that the other kind of stable configuration for the entire Earth is the snowball. And the only reason why we're not in the snowball, despite the fact that we totally could, is because we haven't been pushed hard enough in that direction. So there's kind of two poles to Earth's climate, right? One which is normal, but the uh, snowball Earth is perfectly stable under the same conditions, which is terrifying and interesting. Okay, so this is uh, the common argument that we kind of have to get out of the way soon, right? Uh, the argument goes something like this, is, you know, Earth has a long history and it goes through cycles. I had a middle school teacher tell me this and, you know, it's changed before and it'll change again and such is all, you know, part of the natural cycle and ways of doing things and <laughs> that's kind of the end of it, right? Um, it's basically an argument that says that, you know, because Earth's climate has changed before, um, there's nothing to worry about, so let's, you know, go to lunch and watch TV. Okay. This is really about the same as saying, like, you know, okay, your car's on fire, and somebody's there like, look, your car's temperature has changed many times before. It gets warmer. It gets cooler. This is just another change in the cycles of your car. All right. It equally <laughs> intelligent argument to that. Because... Uh, what is happening right now with human beings is unprecedented, totally unprecedented. The only other things which could remotely be compared would be like those big mass extinction events, right? And even then, I mean, the rate at which human beings are changing carbon dioxide concentrations, the rate at which human beings are changing temperature is not matched by anything else other than those asteroid impacts. So it's good company. Um, this is a kind of complicated graph, and we don't have to worry about all the nooks and crannies here at all. Um, here we're at 500 million years before the present, so this is about where animal life comes online in the sea, right? So life itself in some form had existed for billions of years before this, but it's not until about right here that you start to get, you know, complex animal life, and it doesn't come online uh, gradually either. It comes online all at once um, for reasons that are kind of beyond my pay grade and nobody really understands, but it does. Basically, you go from no fossils, no fossils, no fossils, no fossils, to all the fossils, and that happens right there in this thing called the Cambrian, right? Uh, temperature has changed, right, through all of these. So we've seen dips, right? So notice this is degrees Celsius compared to modern average. So at certain times, for most of the past, it was much hotter. And in fact, if we were to go back further than this on the timeline into even deeper Earth's history, it would even be hotter than this. Why? Uh, because Earth is losing heat gradually over time, right? On, you know, a scale of like billions of years, it is losing heat and will eventually become still and die far in the future. Uh, here, right, we notice it is much hotter, but with substantial variations, on the scale of millions to hundreds of millions of years. Uh, those snowball Earths, right? There's one of them that's thought to happen like right here, right before animal life kind of explodes onto the scene. Whether those are related, I say yes. Nobody else agrees with me. We'll see. Um, there are other events, right? So we'll notice through the sort of recent part of it. So here is where the dinosaurs go extinct, right? Um, since then, mostly things have been warmer than they are now, 
In other words, our Ice Age is unusual, all things considered. Oh, and yeah, this is the other snowball Earth here in the Carboniferous, this period here. It's the other one of those. Uh, broadly speaking, much warmer than it is now. We notice that it is slowly cooling with a lot of noise and variations along the way. Uh, these squiggles are broadly due to shifting of continents and due to orbital cycles, which we don't really necessarily need to worry about. Um, those orbital cycles related to the quarks of Earth's orbit are what causes ice ages to uh, come together and then recede, right, in more recent time. So now, for this part of it, notice that the time scale does shift as you go along. We're zooming in, essentially, right, on the most recent part of history tends to be more important, and it's where we have more data. So on the scale of, what, a thousand, thousand years before present, so this is about one million years before now, this is about when Homo sapiens or anatomically modern humans emerge, right? We notice that there is an extreme periodicity to this, which is driven by the quarks of Earth's orbit, these things called the Milankovitch cycles. Um, notice that this is far colder than pretty much anything through massive uh, times, right? Other than the snowball Earth, we are colder than any time, except for these ice ages right now, right? So from a million years all the way up to 20,000 years ago, right? So this would be, oh, roughly the time that human beings start settling. You don't quite get writing or anything yet. We are in like the oldest part of the Stone Age. So agriculture comes online about here. Uh, written language maybe comes online about here, right? We have more little quirks in the cycle, right? All the way up until right here. And the point that this is kind of driving at, right, is that uh, this is where we are today, right? A basically instantaneous massive jump upward on this time scale. Uh, this is a prediction out to 2100. We don't necessarily need to care about the prediction to see that this is unprecedented here, right? To zoom in on it, put it in other terms, right? Uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, which strongly control climate and have throughout all of Earth's history, um, have not been above this line of 300 parts per million, even through the last like million years through the last 800,000 years, right? Tends to go in these fairly regular cycles controlled by a number of factors, including quarks of Earth's orbit, right? And, you know, claims that what human beings are doing to the planet is unprecedented. Picture is worth a thousand words on that one. And in case you're curious, data for this mostly comes from ice cores in the Antarctic, where you can analyze isotopic ratios. Point is that, yes, Earth's climate has changed over time in so many ways, but never this quickly outside of an asteroid impact, and never like this, right? And that is part of what leads us into the human consequences of this.